Hi, this is Jason Filter with the Daily Forex Report for July 28th. Currently looking at the U.S. Japanese yen pair. This particular pair did pull back over this last session, pulled back pretty low. Uh, I do anticipate this pair moving lower as well. Look for uh, overall, we're moving sideways with so the bias that is sideways. Look for this pair to possibly go as high as 95.89 possibly as low as 93.32. Look for some resistance around 94.77 and look for some support around 93.87 in this particular pair. Now switching to the Euro USD pair, this particular pair uh, closed lower today. It's definitely moving sideways overall. Look for this pair to possibly go as high as 143.99, possibly as low as 140.43. Look for some resistance around 142.34 and look for some support around 141.17 in this particular pair. Now switching to the pound US dollar pair, this pair moved lower, closed lower, uh, definitely within the realm of our sideways movement here. Uh, look for this pair to uh, possibly move as high as 166.71, possibly as low as 162.76. Look for some resistance around 164.86 and look for some support around 163.81 in this particular pair. Now switching to the U.S. Swiss, this pair closed up right in line with previous resistance, uh, tagged some previous support as well. Uh, definitely look for this pair to possibly move, uh, continue moving sideways, bias sideways, but to move possibly as high as 1.0872 possibly as low as 10582. Look for some resistance around 10772 and look for some support around 10704. Now, as far as news announcements goes, we have the Eurozone releasing the German CPI for July. Uh, there's no time given, but it's supposed to be out uh, later tomorrow. Um, Consensus is they have moved, uh, the CPI has moved lower from 0.1% to negative 0.3%. Now, switching to the U.S. news announcement, we have a U.S. durable goods orders for June being released at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Consensus is the durable goods has dropped from 1.8% to negative 0.7%, which would be negative news for the U.S. dollar. Now, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand has their interest rate decision at 5 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. Consensus is they're going to hold rates at 2.5%. Uh, if you have a good counter trend system, this would be a good opportunity in the uh, New Zealand U.S. dollar pair to, uh, to trade that uh, prior to the news announcement tomorrow uh, after, after the U.S. market starts to wind down around 3 um, the news announcement's at 5 p.m., so maybe 2 or 3 tomorrow until right before 5 p.m. would be a good time to, uh, to trade a counter-trend strategy for a pre-news announcement. Now, uh, what am I looking for during this next session? I haven't seen a better setup in a long time in the U.S.-Canadian dollar pair. We've had this nice rundown. Let me back out a little bit so we can see what we're looking at. Okay, we've had we've had a nice rundown. We have previous some previous uh, support that we've come close to and hit, um, and we've tested it and pulled back. Uh, what's interesting about that to me is we've we've tested it and pulled back twice now, as you can see, uh, the very low. But over the last this last session, instead of having a breakout. Uh, after testing it, we've had we have this doji bar that's been created. After this nice long trend, I mean we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sessions in a row of downward movement. We've also uh, we also had you know the three days prior to a pullback. Uh, so we've had you know three sessions down, quick pullback, and then seven sessions of of uh, you know uh, downward movement. Now we have this doji bar that's been created. Well, is what's interesting to me about that is we have a great opportunity to place a stop a few pips below the low of the doji. Look for a breakout of the high of the doji. So look to buy. 
one pip above it. And then we have previous, where would we look for this trade to go? We would look for this trade to go back to our previous uh, support, which would now be resistance. Okay, so we have that right there. If you take a look at what that means as far as pips, means looks like we're, we'd be risking somewhere around 160, and we would be making around 215 uh, for this particular trade. Now you could, if you wanted to, if you wanted to have a little bit better risk to reward and not wait for the breakout, you could definitely do that. Uh, go ahead, if you entered right now, you're looking at risking maybe 80 pips and possibly making almost 300. So your risk to reward on that's over uh, three to one, and that would be a good trade. If we get a breakout to the downside below the doji, the low of the doji at that point, um, you, you know we're wrong as far as market direction. But I do see it pulling back, uh, back up to that point. So that's definitely something to keep note of and uh, to trade if you want. Well, that about does it for today. Until next time, this is Jason Fielder. Good trading.